So the next one we're gonna wrap is a normal standard kitchen cupboard door. I've already taken the handle off, again, just because it's so much easier. I'm gonna wrap this one in a blue vinyl. Again, Surfex interior wrapping film. This one, we're gonna leave the sides a bit longer because I wanna be able to heat the edges and wrap it in fully. So I just, normally, there's two options again. Some people like to just put a bit of tape at the end. It just keeps your vinyl from moving. That's what, that's what I found anyway. So we'll just do the same, peel back vinyl away from the backing paper. Again, this is just the way I like to do it. Again, people have their own sort of ways and ideas, which is all well and good. And now what I can do is pull against that where the marshing tape's been stuck and then start to lay. Tend to find with a lot of these kitchen cupboards and that where they're gloss, the vinyl sticks really well to it. So there's never any real need for any primers. Obviously the door's already been pre-cleaned. Which you can clean with any alcohol cleaner, methylated spirits. And again, just keep working your way along. Again. So now that's fully wrapped, uh, what I've done on this door is just put a little stand underneath so that your vinyl hangs down. So I'm just going to put my wrapping glove on and heat the corners up and show that what you should be able to do is do it so it can all heat and then you won't have any join. And then just give it a full stretch. So that you've actually got that edge all in in one. Obviously you do all your corners first. So again, fully wrapped round all the way. That's why it's good to have the door on a, on a stand. So now what I'll tend to do is work all the way along each side to the centre. Again, heat it out, any creases you might have. Getting a nice neat edge around the shape of the door.
you'll find that once all the creases go, you can just, don't need to have the heat on the whole thing. All you're doing is obviously stretching the vinyl and then wanting it to go back into its natural shape, which obviously it's done along here now. What I tend to do with this as well is cut the back corners so that when you wrap it round it's just a bit easier to work with the vinyl. Sometimes it's hard working out to have enough vinyl to heat in and wrap round and then another way to have not too much. And then what I tend to do is get a little bit more heat just to soften up the vinyl. And then stretch it and wrap it over. Put my glove on. Again, I tend to do the corners first. I think the main idea is just making sure your vinyl sits nice and flat. And we're now I'm just going to cut the corners away. Just again, just to get rid of any excess vinyl. Makes it a bit easier to work with. Do the other side. What I've found since using architectural vinyl is there's so many different ranges that you can use it for. So much that you can wrap with it. Now I'll do that um, front edge. As you can see, it sort of creases up and bunches there. As soon as you get the heat on it, it goes and you can stretch it over and lay it flat. Heating as well, just brings it on that edge a lot tighter, a lot neater. Not left-handed. Again, I'll just cut the corners away. Right, 
what I'm going to do now, just with my straight edge, trim it all up. You know what? Just to make it a little bit easier now. Take that off. Yeah, just trim all around the edges. That looks nice and neat. Obviously this is the inside, which won't be seen, obviously, until cupboards get open. <clears throat> These are just all the finishing touches that make it look ne neater. You can feel that once a vinyl's been heated up and then you put it off, it's all really stiff. So that's that, all wrapped with a neat edge. So all I need to do now is cut out where the handles go. Let's get the handle, screw it back on. That is one finished wrapped kitchen door.